Next on Worcester News Tonight, a special donation for former Auburn police officer Ron Tarantino. Plus, we speak with local politicians about last night's sit-in by House Democrats. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Andy Madison. We begin tonight with a Worcester Mall scheduled to be auctioned off tomorrow. The Greendale Mall auction will take place at 11 a.m. The property went into foreclosure earlier this year. It is owned by Mayflower Greendale LP. The auction was originally scheduled for last month but got postponed. The mall was first built almost 30 years ago in Worcester. A Worcester Foundation making a special donation today in honor of a police officer who was killed in line of duty last month. The Greater Worcester Community Foundation gave a $3,500 grant to the Auburn and Leicester Police Departments, the two departments where Ron Tarantino served as an officer. Tarantino was shot and killed last month. Since his death, the community has organized several fundraisers for the Tarantino family and the police department. Of love and support, and we had a small grant pool available in hopes that it might be used for something that would be to uplift the team at this time or to provide some kind of comfort and support. The two special grants were part of a $37,900 grant money given to several organizations in Leicester. Officer Tarantino's death is also bringing focus to crimes against police officers. Today, Governor Charlie Baker filed legislation to increase penalties for people who assault and harm police officers. Olivia Lemon has a look at the latest step by the governor. Out of tragedies, we usually see changes in legislation. Worcester County District Attorney Joseph Early Jr. says he supports a bill filed by Governor Baker Thursday. It would make it a felony for anyone charged with assaulting and causing serious bodily harm to a police officer. Give us another tool with regards to prosecuting people who assault police officers. It comes a month after the murder of Auburn police officer Ronald Tarantino. That in itself will signal to judges and court personnel that this individual has a propensity for very violent behavior when taking on such action against a police officer and could provide them with meaningful information when they're making decisions around bail. Lieutenant Governor Karen Polito says the proposed legislation will increase the maximum sentence from two and a half years to 10 years in state prison. It will also bring a minimum of a one year sentence. The trial court did an examination around cases involving Jorge Zambrano, the man who shot and killed Officer Tarantino. Polito says all appropriate action was taken, but recommendations were made on what could be done better in the future. Bringing in uh, more technology more communication among court personnel and really having the full record available uh, to judges who have to make uh, important and serious decisions within you know relatively short periods of time that have serious consequences. State Representative Paul Frost filed similar legislation last week. He says the number one request he heard after Officer Tarantino's death was to do something to help strengthen the law to protect police. It doesn't matter to me which one were to pass whether it be this session or next, uh, but as long as we can get something like this passed in the memory of Officer Tarantino. Olivia Lemon, Worcester News Tonight. A late night in Washington, the U.S. House of Representatives held a sit-in on the chamber floor last night to try and force a vote on gun control. The protest was led by Georgia Congressman John Lewis after four gun policy measures failed to move forward. Our Tim McCone spoke to one local congressman who was part of the group that stayed up all night. Democrats end their day-long sit-in on gun control Thursday, but not before making sure their message is heard. We can do something, and shame on this leadership for blocking time and time again any attempt to have a debate. Congressman Jim McGovern took part in the more than 25-hour sit-in and says Democrats simply want to close loopholes. If you were suspected of being a terrorist and they think you're too dangerous to get on an airplane, and fly anywhere, uh, then why is it that, you, uh, that it's okay for you to go out and buy an assault weapon? In a move to try to end the sit-in overnight, Republicans adjourned for a recess until July 5th. Mr. Speaker, you are the Speaker of all members of Congress. Not your, you're not the Speaker of the NRA. You're the Speaker of Republicans and Democrats. It's time you started to act like it. This isn't trying to come up with a solution to a problem. This is trying to get attention. 
former Worcester mayor and talk show host Jordan Levy says the sit-in had mixed results. It was effective because the press played it. It was ineffective because it accomplished nothing. It's a numbers game, and there are no numbers. The Democrats don't control in the House, so therefore there's not going to be any gun control legislation coming out of there. And that's as simple as it's going to be. Democrats have vowed not to let the issue go, saying they will be ready to fight for stricter gun control laws. All we are saying here is that the United States House of Representatives, the greatest deliberative body in the world, ought to deliberate. Tim McCone, Worcester News Tonight. A Becker College student is accused of filming another student during sex without their consent. Court records show 22-year-old Mikhail Kessel is charged with unlawful wiretap and photographing an unsuspected nude person. Becker College confirms he is under investigation. After being arraigned today, Kessel was released and ordered to stay 100 yards away from the victim. He is due back in court in August. A Spencer landscaper charged with raping and photographing his ex-girlfriend while she was unconscious. 50-year-old Kenneth Gingras was arraigned earlier this week and pleaded not guilty. The judge ruled he has to stay away from his ex-girlfriend. Police say the woman found out about the incident through Facebook when someone showed her the pictures on a website. Gringas claims his computer was hacked but later admitted to posting the pictures. A new restaurant now open for business in Worcester. Hey. Antonio's Pizza by the Slice cut the ribbon for their Worcester location this afternoon on Chandler Street. The restaurant is known for their award-winning gourmet pizzas and its other locations in Massachusetts and Rhode Island. Owner Bill Kitsilis, who grew up in Worcester, says it's special to have his yeah, own restaurant think? in the city. Been into Worcester for about seven years. I mean, Worcester's the second largest community in New England population-wise. It's we just feel like Worcester's a pizza town, and we have so many UMass Amherst alumni in the area. We just thought it would be a natural fit. So it just we couldn't get here soon enough. Antonio's by the slice has also gotten a ringing endorsement from our own Tim McCone. Meanwhile, Worcester continues to take steps toward becoming a healthier city. Today, the city revealed its community health improvement plan, which they're calling CHIP. The city's health committee has been working with Central Mass Regional Public Health Alliance on devising a plan to help Worcester reach its goal of becoming the healthiest city by 2020. Part of the plan calls for focusing on mental health and cracking down on substance abuse in the community. New laws could now govern Uber and Lyft in Massachusetts. The Senate filed a bill allowing drivers to pick up passengers at Logan Airport and the Boston Convention Center. The House version, however, does not. Also, under the Senate bill, drivers would not have to go through background checks or fingerprinting, and the tipping option would be required on the app. The Senate is scheduled to vote next week. Much-needed funding is on the way to help refurbish the state's Vietnam Memorial in Green Hill Park. The memorial is a lasting tribute to the more than 1,500 men and women from Massachusetts who were killed in Vietnam. Our Brittany Schaefer has the details on how, on how that money will be used. We appreciate them and we honor them. Uh, and this is just a small way to let them know that. Lieutenant Governor Karen Polito announced Thursday a $200,000 grant to help renovate the Massachusetts Vietnam Veterans Memorial in Worcester. My brothers and sisters gave their lives for this country and we just want to make sure that, you know, that they're always on it. Anybody who comes and visits this place to know the honor uh, and appreciation that we have for the sacrifice of the Vietnam veterans. The names of more than 1,500 Massachusetts veterans killed in the Vietnam War are on the state's memorial in Green Hill Park. This is not just a, a, a central mass or a Worcester memorial. This is the statewide Vietnam's Veterans Memorial. So it's uh, while it is an incredibly uh, important day for the city of Worcester and Worcester County, it is an equally important day for the entire state. City leaders have a list of areas they want to improve within the memorial grounds. If you look at the edge of the, the pond, uh, there's some areas where it needs to be kind of repaired. We have to fix the walls, then we have to clean up a little bit. We have to get the lights working down below in the water. In addition to the $200,000 grant, the Baker Polito administration also announced Worcester will receive $50,000 every year for the memorial's upkeep. 
to be able to, again, not lose an opportunity to thank our Vietnam veterans in a way that they did not receive when they came home, but also to remind them that while when they are no longer among us, that this memorial will serve as a memory of their service. Brittany Schaefer, Worcester News Tonight. A powerful photo exhibit detailing workplace bullying is on display at Worcester's Union Station. Advocate Robin Miller's work is called Massachusetts Face Workplace Bullying. It shows the faces of 15 workplace bullying targets and shares their stories. The exhibit is meant to encourage conversation about adult bullies and their targets. To educate the community about how this is actually healing for us because many of us have suffered psychological, physical, um, and financial um, trauma from experiencing the horrendous effects of being bullied either by our supervisors or by fellow employees in the workplace. Face workplace bullying will be on display at Union Station until July 15th.